Hey guys, it's Mutely, and the video's starting now. Quick message before the video starts. A lot of people seem to think that you have to like Dungeons & Dragons to like Ouroboros Lock, but that's not the case. The comic doesn't have anything to do with D&D, it's just based off a story. You won't have to know anything about D&D to read the comic, so don't worry about it if you've never played it and you want to read anyway. Anyway, a lot of people have been wanting to know about the races and species in Ouroboros Lock, so that's what this video is going to be about. Not all of them are 100% original, but we tried to reimagine them in our own way so it's not just a direct replica of the D&D races. Some of these guys will also be based off the wildlife we already know. They'll all have their own little fun characteristics that set them apart from each other and what they're based off of. Well, first off, there's humans in our world, and what is there to explain about that? Even if it's kind of boring to have humans in a whole fantasy setting, they're still going to be hanging out anyway. Closest to the humans are elves. Dawn elves are your stereotypical elves, with very human traits besides their pointed ears, and related to them are solar elves and lunar elves. Solar elves are usually found in warmer parts of the world. They often have long, round ears, light hair, golden eyes, and warm-toned skin. And lunar elves live in colder areas. They have grayish, blue, or purple skin with white, silver, or black hair, and long, pointed ears. Lunar elves have very vibrant colored or white eyes also orcs, which are, you know, orcs, but without their aggressive and, frankly, racist stereotypes. We're letting characters be full orc and treated like people without being evil instead of settling for half-orc characters. Atchermen are like dwarves and gnomes. The subrace Quoramen is for dwarves, who live in rough, stony areas and are built like a brick wall. And Floramen are gnomes, who have more mouse-like qualities. And for anyone that doesn't know about D&D, they aren't like garden gnomes, so, uh, Sorry, Sherlock Gnomes fans. Sirenity are like cool mermaid people, and that's all I have to say about them. Fawns and satyrs are a little more self-explanatory. Satyrs are people with goat legs like real satyrs, and fawns are the same but with deer legs. And this brings us to our more animal-based races. This is for all the furries out there. These races are more attuned to wildlife than the more humanoid races because of their more animal-like characteristics. Drakeans, or drakes, are like dragonborns. They're lizard-like humanoids with elemental breath. Ember drakes are fire breathers that live in hot temperatures. Glacial drakes have frost breath and live in cold temperatures. And in the middle are charge drakes, who have lightning powers and live in foresty areas, and toxin drakes with poison who live in water. And the drakeans' not-so-draconic cousins are salises. They're salamander-like, but without cool powers. They have an aquatic subrace called Accidents, who are similar to them but based off axolotls. We also have frogs called polywigs. They're shorter than the other human-sized races, about the same size as an atramen. More sea-based races are called leviaths and Lus luscus? Luscus. Uh, okay. Leviaths are cool tardigrade anglerfish, while luscus are based off of the nautilus. And back on land is what you guys probably really want, the Felidae. This is Mutely's race of anthropomorphic cats. They usually have more domestic cat patterns, but can be based off big cats as well. Similar to them are canids. They are anthropomorphic dogs that can be based off a variety of species like wolves, foxes, hyenas, and many others, including domestic dogs. And avians are anthropomorphic birds. Their arms and legs are more talon-like instead of having human hands or feet, and they have wings on their back. Avians can also be based off a variety of species. Protothesians are invertebrates and anthropods with three subraces. There's Insectarian, who are bugs, Molopod, who are sea Molopods, who Molopods, who are sea slugs, and Nidoterrarian, who are spiders. Lastly on our nature walk is plant people, called Aphylites. They have more of a fey origin and can be a wide range of heights, ranging from 3 to 8 feet tall. Metrium are moss people. Mycelites are mushroom people, and plantes are general forest people. And now we can talk about the deity-based races. These guys are based less on nature and more on angels and demons. Radiants are our angel equivalent. They can be based off any race, but they have wings and sometimes markings based off one of the many gods. They can be born from two parents who aren't radiants, or two radiant parents that have a non-radiant child or very rarely someone could be blessed directly by a god to become a radiant later in life. And speaking of blessed, that's the name of a radiant subrace. They're like pure radiants where they're blessed by a god, but they only have markings related to their gods and they don't have any wings. Another radiant subrace is fallen. These are radiants who rejected their origin god. 
Any colors related to their god turn black or white, and their wings slowly get weaker and fall apart. And next up are imps. They're rarely found on Carceris directly. They mainly live on a plane of death. They're roughly three feet tall humanoids with large horns and no hair. Daemon are related to imps, but they're more human-sized and live directly on Carceris. These would be our version of D&D's tieflings. The main race is infernal daemons, who have red, gray, or purple skin, feathery tails, and short or curved horns. Veined daemons are closely related to infernals. Their skin can be any color, but they have small streaks on their bodies resembling veins, which could also be any color. They have white hair and large, majestic horns. Cherry daemons can either have pastel pink or dark skin, and they often have pink streaks going through their hair. Their canine teeth are long and sharp, sometimes enough to be shown outside of their mouth. Their horns are usually round and segmented. The last daemon is a quasi, who are semi-aquatic and have blue or yellow skin with the opposite color as their hair. They tend to have short horns, but when they grow longer, they usually face backwards. And these are all of our races so far. There are some exceptions to the specific races, like the gods of Carceris. They're more abstract humanoids instead of being based off of a race, but we'll be talking more about the gods in next week's video. We'll also have a link to typed out information about each race in the description. We're open to adding more races and even developing them further, too. We've also had some people ask if they can make original characters based off of a Roboros lock, so if you're interested in that, go ahead. We'd really love to see what you guys come up with, especially since we're eventually planning to have contests to get fan-made characters into a Roboros lock or the game as background characters. And as I said before, feel free to leave any questions or topics you want me to discuss in the comments. While I can't reply to everything, I do read every single comment, and we take them all into consideration for future content. All of my social media links will be in the description as well, so you can follow me all over the internet if you want. That sounded a lot scarier than what I meant. Oh boy. Anyway, go check out the Discord and Patreon and all that. I just gotta get all those video outro shoutouts out of the way. Bye!